Hey everybody, welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. For this video, I'm going to show you the buttercream version I came up with for the sweater weather cake. Uh, about a week ago or so, maybe a little more than that, I did a fondant version and I promised you I would do a buttercream version. So this cake features buttercream piping and some marshmallows for the little pom-poms. So if this sounds like something that sounds interesting, stick around, we'll get right to it. So I started with a seven inch three layer cake that I had already stacked and crumb coated. And now I'm adding my layer of buttercream. You don't need to do an overly thick layer of buttercream since you are going to actually be piping more buttercream on top. Just enough so that you can't see through the cake, just in case. And I'm using my piping bag to apply the buttercream. You don't have to, you can just use your spatula if you like to, but I personally find that this is a little bit, a little bit more um, time efficient. I guess I should say. I find that I can get a little bit more even coverage to start off with and then it's a little easier when you're removing the excess. So go ahead and use your scraper, whatever kind you prefer. I like to use these plastic scrapers because I like the weight of them. They're a little bit lighter. Remove the excess and then set it in your fridge for 20 minutes or your freezer for 10 minutes while you are preparing your buttercream. Now I'm showing you I used a piping bag, a coupler, and a tie for the end of the bag. And I have a variety of different um, tips that I wasn't actually sure what I was gonna use. I knew that I wanted to have a lot of texture on this because I'm trying to mimic the knit pattern. So I ended up using, these are a different brand than I normally use. I just um, got these and decided to use them. So I, in a second I'll explain there. What I was doing there was putting my coupler in the bag. I put the inside of the coupler in the bag. Mark with my scissors where it meets that top ring and cut off the excess, then put your tip and the outside of your coupler on. And go ahead and just put your cup, your um, piping bag in a cup if you like to, if that's a little easier, a little less messy, fill it up and then use that tie on the end to hold the buttercream in. And now I'm just using this L-shaped tool. This is just strictly for buttercream use, for cake use, and I am using that to make sure that my markings that I'm gonna use to help me get the line straight is straight up and down. Now this tip, like I said, I was explaining earlier that um, since this is an off-brand that I used, I, these are the ones I happen to have with me at home, I don't know the numbers of them. But this one is, it's like a French tip on one side and then it's flat on the other because I didn't want it to be too far raised away from the side of the cake. You could just go ahead and use the small 1M or French tip, the round one if you prefer. But I'm not using large tips, I'm using smaller ones, medium to small. And then I switched to a smaller French tip. And all I'm doing, this is for the braiding part, I am just crossing over each side. Begin your piping at the top and then pull it down and release when you get to the bottom and just crisscross over each other all the way down. I had already kind of marked out a pattern that I wanted on a piece of paper ahead of time just so that I knew. So that's why I started with the straight lines down and then every third row I did a different pattern. So I had wanted more of this braiding than the other pattern so I did those every other one and then I went in on either side and did one pattern on either side and kind of continued that pattern all the way around. Now here I am switching to more of a small 1M tip. And I'm going to do just simple press and release little buttons is what I'm gonna call them. I'm not sure what they're called. But to space it, I do one on each end, one in the middle, and then fill in in between. That way you get even spacing. Now these do have little tips on the tops of them, but I will go back in and push those down after it has had time to, to crust a little bit. So it wouldn't stick to my fingers when I started it. And now this one is 
I'm not sure which tip I used on this one. This is probably just another version of that French tip. And I'm just swirling it. That's all I'm doing. Swirling it and making sure that the back end is actually touching the cake. And do this all the way around in your remaining spots. You could do more different patterns if you wanted to. But I wanted to keep this one a little bit more simple so that it's more something that you can do at home if you don't have a lot of experience. You can practice these patterns on a piece of parchment on your counter before you even go in and try it on the cake. I do suggest that just to kind of get your your hand in the motion of what you're doing before you do it on the cake. And even if you do do it on the cake and you don't like it, just scrape it off. Since your cake is chilled, you can scrape it off and do it over again. I did do that a couple times. I just edited that out. It happens to all of us. Now here I'm just going back and tapping down any high spots. Now you can leave the top if you prefer, but I kind of, at first I was going to just do this rope pattern or the braided pattern around the outside edge and then I went a little crazy and you'll see I kind of, <laughs> I kind of covered the whole top. That's okay, it's just completely what you want to do. Now to make the pom-poms, I'm using these sugar crystals and just putting some in the bowl. And then I'm just using regular large marshmallows, some piping gel, and a brush. And obviously, <laughs> some toothpicks. Now this is one of those situations where you'll want to tell your customer there are toothpicks in there before you serve it, take them out. And just use your brush to, pipe, to brush on some of that piping gel because that's what's gonna make the sugar crystals stick. Make sure you get all the spots. And if you do miss a couple spots, that's okay. Go back in and put some more and then just tap in some more of those crystals. And I find it's a little easier to begin with to just kind of press your marshmallow into the crystals. And you can go back in and sprinkle some more on in any spots like that where you might have missed some. And tap off the excess and do repeat for your second one. Now I just add a little dot of buttercream where I'm going to place the pom-pom. I stuck the skew or the um, toothpick in first, and then I press the marshmallow on it. And I'm just using a round tip to mimic the look of strings. You could use fondant if you wanted to. I just wanted the color of the yarn to match what was on the cake a little bit better. So there it is, guys. This is my buttercream version of a sweater weather cake. 
I hope you give it a go. And if you do, go ahead and send me pictures. You can send me pictures on Instagram and Facebook. I'm on there as well. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.